Well, Somalia is facing a constitutional crisis. The country's opposition leaders say they no longer recognize Mohamed Abdullahi Mohamed, also known as Famajo, as president after an election deadline was missed today and his term technically expired. Now, talks between the federal government and regional states on how to proceed with the elections collapsed on Friday. Aisha Afra has more. Anger in the Somali parliament. These MPs were hoping to have elections today. The three-day talks that were finally meant to pave way for the polls failed on Friday. The talks stalled as leaders argued over the electoral process. The deadlock means the election deadline has been missed. And this man, Mohammed Abdullah from Majestam, as the president of Somalia, has expired. Now, the opposition presidential candidates say they will no longer recognize Farmajo as president. The opposition leaders are calling for the formation of a transitional authority to lead the country until elections can be held. The candidates also urge the Somali National Army to stop taking orders from Mohamed Abdullahi Farmajo from today. But there are fears that the political uncertainty could play into the hands of jihadist group Al-Shabaab the militants control vast areas of central and southern Somalia and have vowed to disrupt any elections. A UN statement on behalf of many of Somalia's international partners said there was only one way out of this crisis, to resume negotiations and hold the elections. The United States also issued a similar message. But for now, Somalia stands in limbo. Aisha Frah, BBC News. Let's bring in Dr. Afiare Elmi, an associate professor of the Security Studies at Qatar University. Thanks for taking time to talk to us on Focus on Africa. We clearly have a situation in Somalia. The country appears to be in political limbo, so to speak. Help us understand how unique uh, this situation is. Well, actually, we are in a very difficult position at the moment, simply because we don't have political agreement among the stakeholders and the incumbent government was not able to deliver election. So we are at the impasse. And at the moment, uh, the uh, parties are not talking to each other. So that's why the international community is urging uh, for the resumption of negotiation, uh, either back to Galmudug in Dusamarev or come to Magdisho. But the, the only way out is to work within the framework of uh, 17 September agreement that the international community actually helped it. Uh, Somalis to reach and uh, from there on res resolve the three outstanding technical issues. We'll talk about that in just a moment, but I just wonder what, what powers the president still has under these circumstances. What does the constitution say? Well, uh, the constitution actually is quite clear and when it comes to the mandate of both uh, the parliament and the president. It ends in four years. Then the parliament passed uh, a legislation which uh, was signed by the president. And that's questionable, actually. If you look at the, the maybe the constitutional uh, lawyers might argue uh, on this. But as far as I understand, there is no mandate for both parliament and the, uh, and the president or presidency. But what they have is this just like, I mean, caretaker mode where they should not be uh, reaching any substantive decision, uh, uh, but just to work on this single election issue. So you, you, what you're saying is that the country's parliament uh, is, cannot be in control at all, or even the speaker of parliament for that matter? How does it work? Not, not, not at all. They are on the same ground at the moment, because the parliament term ended sub, uh, in December 27, and the president's term ended today. So basically, we are in a... Uh, a situation where uh, the legal aspect, if you want to use the legal institutions, are, are, are not being actually uh, instrumentalized to function. Hmm. I know you mentioned the international community uh, and some level of uh, negotiation or intervention, uh, but I also wonder whether this situation makes the stability of Somalia even shakier, given the whole al Shabaab background. Well, yes, uh, whenever there is a, a, a political contestation or uh, disagreement among the political groups, uh, you know, a number of uh, uh, non-state actors or violent non-state actors take advantage of and try to capitalize on these, I mean, uh, uh, distractions and 
uh, other political problems. And that's actually going to happen because when you see uh, now that the number of attacks is growing and uh, people becoming more anxious, yes, we have a reason uh, to be, uh, I mean, concerned in terms of security. Mm. But I am very optimistic in terms of the level of understanding of the people and also to the credit of the politicians. They were trying to calm the situation. Uh, the opposition leader is in their second point actually uh, call it for non-violence. So yeah. that's very good. It's and a... also the other parties, like the Formaggio government says, they wanted to continue negotiations. So we, ha we have no other way but just to keep going at the negotiation. All right. So I know you briefly mentioned it, but uh, the opposition formation of uh, a transitional body to guide the country into agreed upon elections, would that be, in your opinion, the way forward in order to bring this country together? Well, like any other polity, I mean, uh, politics between opposition and incumbent government that are trying to compete for power. In Somalia, it seems, I mean, the opposition is too disorganized and the government is too incompetent. So when you have these two, uh, I mean, uh, forces, and at the moment, the only actually uh, perhaps credible and uh, and, 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 and uh, I would say responsible party is the international community that's mm. trying to keep them talking to each other. That's very unfortunate, uh, in fact. All right, uh, Dr. Afiare Elmi, obviously a situation that we are all keenly following to see how it evolves. Thank you very much indeed for taking time to talk to us here on Focus in Africa. Thank you.